The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 29th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-664. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Now, send that early if you would, and send that to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a sea of green out there. Every U.S. indice that we track is trading to the upside. Every sector inside the S&P 500 is trading to the upside. We've got a rally. Will it hold? We're going to go figure that out. Dow's up 172. S&P's up 34. NASDAQ 148. Russell's up 7. Semi's up 61. Tranny's up 91. Now, gold is off 6 bucks, trading at 1967. Silver down. Well, silver's flat at 2342. Lights we could up buck sixty nine, two and a half percent move to the upside. Natural gas is off one penny, trading out of two oh one and thirty year treasure one twenty nine thirty one is the print out there. Lead the charge dollar wise the upside. You've got Lululemon, forty three bucks or fourteen percent. MicroStrategy, twenty one bucks, eight percent. Cintas Group, nineteen bucks, four percent. Mercado Libre, up one and a half percent, that's eighteen bucks. Lamb Research, three and a half percent or sixteen buckaroonies. The shakers to the downside, it's Burlington stores off about eight bucks or nearly four percent. O'Reilly Automotive, six bucks. Less than one percent. United Health, five bucks, a little over one percent. PVH Corp, four percent, and four bucks. Progress Software Corp, down five percent, and that's a three buck move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin by taking a look at what. Do you know what we're going to take a look at? Let's go look at market breadth right now. Where are we at with regard to market breadth for the S&P 500? We had switched to uh, bullish on the daily time frame. We did that earlier this morning. Let's just take a look at it. So we'll take a look at all four time frames out here. Uh, this is the daily. Over on the daily, we can now see we have 154 instruments trading above the top of a daily profile and a 93 trading below. Those are very bullish conditions out there. It's the weekly that's the only one that is in a bearish mode, so to speak. You have 85 trading above. 147 below. So there's the thorn in the side, if you will, for the S&P 500. For a four-hour time frame chart, you're 317 above, 60 below. On a one-hour time frame chart, you are 400 above, 37 below. Folks, this is a very strong market breadth. I know many people are interested in trying to take a short position out here. I just say that with regard to market breadth, it's the S&P 500 that's been in the thorn in the side of the markets here for quite some time as it's had that negative market breadth out there. Again, this is just the one-hour chart we're taking a look at. But we're we're market breadth bullish here with, a comp with regard to the uh, the S&P 500. We know we're market breadth bullish across the board inside the NQ. Well, let's just make sure of that, Stevie. Yeah, you're, you're bullish weekly, daily, 240, and the 60 minutes. So at this stage here, from a market breadth standpoint, the, um, uh, these, uh, uh, these, these gains should hold out there, and maybe they're going to be added to. So we know where we're at with market breath. Let's take a look at our New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. We're well above zero. In fact, we're headed towards overbought territory. We're not there just yet. We're up the uh, 126 uh, ratio uh, level up there. Once you get to the plus 150, uh, that's where you can get into a over 
a sold uh, condition out there, and we'd be looking for a plus 150 failure, meaning that the price would turn down. But that's not what we're dealing with as we speak right now at this moment. Very bullish as far as the spot volatility index, also very bullish, well below the 50-day exponential moving average. So conditions are ripe. You have uh, positive market breadth out there, and price should continue higher. What's holding price from moving higher out there? Well, it's where the sellers are located. If we take a look at the sellers inside the Dow Equity Future contract, the Dow's got a nice confirmed by the D point pattern. What price has done is run up in that real key resistance level, the top of its profile, 32,797. Remember, it's not the intraday. Uh, levels that we see. It is the close. It is the body of the candle. The last time that price was up here, we had basically two consecutive attempts to bust through that level. The first was on March 21st. The next was on March 22nd. Today is the third time. Is the third time a charm? Stevie has no idea. But if you do see a close above 32,797 on a daily basis, that's telling you to expect a further rally. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 is um, you know has a nice uh, TD nine count bottom price consolidated with inside its bullish structured profile. I would say that if price can close the day above seventeen sixty seven odds favor or seventeen seventy one a move to the eighteen ten level. With regard to the ES mini and the NQ, with regard to the ES mini, it should go target that forty seventy three level. But before it does that, what it needs to do, let me see if I can get this on one of my other screens here. So I can give you the number. It's 40.43.25. So 40.43.25 is the number we're looking at. We've gotten up to 40.47.75. So we know that has acted as resistance. That happens to be the TD9 count uh, breakdown resistance. Uh, no, that's a TD9 count threshold level on the five-hour time frame chart. So if, in fact, or even not a fact, no, but if, in fact, you see a close today about 40.43.25, then we're taking a look at price making its way up to 40.73.75. Could possibly even take that out, but that would be the next resistance level. Inside the NQ, the NQ just simply is likely targeting 13.082. That's at Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. So that's kind of a quick overview of the um, – of the equity markets out there. Let's go uh, hop in and take a look at what's going on under the covers here for the S&P 500. So to do that, we'll switch panels. We'll go to our eight panel white background screen. You should see that here momentarily. In the lower right, we've got a 10 minute time frame chart that formed a rose momentum indicator top. Price pulled back to its breakout area. Didn't get all the way down there, but got pretty darn close at 40.31 and a quarter. Now we've got price bouncing, just simply came back to its breakout level. On a 15-minute time frame chart, we've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal, but no levels of support have been broken, meaning 4028, the breakout area. We've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top on the 30-minute time frame chart. Now here, we have a new profile that has formed. And uh, price did close just below it at 4036, so it's at 4036. We closed below it on that last 30-minute bar. We're trying to get back above it. So is that a false breakdown or not? I would say if at 11.30, price closes below 40.36, odds favor a further move lower. Now, that further move lower, we've got 40.31 on the 10, 40.28 on the 15, 40.16 on the 30-minute chart. We have a TD9, well, we've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the 60-minute time frame chart. Uh, did it form bar number nine? It did not. Uh, so you just have a Rhodes Mintum indicator. So here's the level to be watching. So with regard to the uh, ES mini, we're going we're gonna to say, hey, hands off the ES mini now because we just took a look at the 60-minute chart and we can see exactly what's going on. What I mean what exactly is going on is you have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top with its bullish structured, slightly bullish structured profile having already been tested once a day and holding. So that makes 4031 the key level to watch to the downside. A close below that would suggest some lower price. You've got a 120-minute TD9 count top. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. My apology for that shot clock or talk clock a violation there. I wasn't paying attention to the actual clock and uh, went right to the uh, break. So we were just let me summarize the ES Mini. The numbers to be watching today to the downside to watch 4031. If you see a close below that, certainly on a 60 minute time frame, that tells us about lower price. To the upside, we're watching 4043.25. If we get a close above that, now that would be a five hour close. So really, about 2 p.m. is what you'd be watching for. That would then suggest a further rally up to the 40. 70 ish area, but it does look like these uh, uh, this rally should hold throughout the uh, day. Let's go to our first question. We only have two at the moment, so we'd love to hear from you folks either inside the den or if, uh, obviously you can get send me an email, Steve at tfn.com, or give us a call. We'd love to hear from you at 877 927 6648. First question coming in by email, and there was no name attached to it, so it's really to take a look at ticker so, well, PDFS. I've been in and out, so it says hope. Hope all is well. It is. If you have time, could you analyze PDFS? We're going to. I've been in it and looking for some input. Thanks. Uh, if we take a look at what this is doing, you've got a nice. Uh, so this is a great looking uh, equity here with regard to what it's doing. However, it did form a uh, topping pattern. It completed that topping pattern yesterday. That was called the TD9 cow pattern. Turns out that yesterday was also the confirmation of Rhodes momentum indicator top. So you've got two. That doesn't make it any stronger for top than one. And right now we do have price below its green oscillator and change line. So it has lost its momentum. If price can close back about 41.48, let's call it 41.50 today, it'll be a neutral signal. Right. Right now, it's neutral to bearish because uh, it's lost its momentum, and that would suggest that price might want to test support. Now, the next level of support for you is down. It's because there's a brand new profile that's formed today. It's between 39 and a quarter and 39.90. If you're looking to add to your position, it would be between that range out there, assuming that you don't see some kind of negative uh, volume characteristic on the uh, retracement. So, meaning you'd like to see a light volume retracement out there. If we take a look at the uh, weekly chart. The weekly chart which did have a TD9 count pattern negated it last week. So this is a strong upward momentum move on the weekly time frame. I would stay here, and as I said, I would add to your positions. Um, uh, if you're in a longer-term position, I'd add to it on a pullback on the daily time frame. Now, the monthly says, hey, Steve-O, don't ignore me. Why? Because it is forming bar number eight. Well, we know that a TD9 count uh, can 
and does top on bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar number nine. At this stage here, you've got the daily top. Looks like it wants to take a rest out, a rest out, a timeout, a little bit of rest there. Uh, the weekly chart says, I want a motor on higher, as does the monthly. Let's go take a look at the black background charts. I can better draw the different A to B equals C dependents, and there are several of them out there. So let's switch screens here. We'll take a look at where the next price projection levels are to the upside, assuming that the daily can overtake that TD9 count top and that Rhodes Mintum indicator top. If that can happen, and we look at the weekly chart here, uh, actually, I'm just going to look at the monthly because the monthly's got uh, both, uh, all, really all the A to B equals CD patterns. So the first one that starts all the way back from the lows in October of 2018, that gives us a one-to-one -one price projection. Oh, let me just do this here. Let's just re redraw them. So let's draw these in here. That way it might help people out at home. So your A point or B point is going to be the high from the month of August of 2020. The retracement down into March of 2021. And now you can see we're well above the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. So the next price projection level is 46.95. Now remember, not until it takes out the high from a few days ago, that TD9 count top on the daily time frame, which is 42.20 out there. But overall, on a weekly basis, looks very good on a... Uh, Monthly basis looks very good out there. And as I say, multiple A to B equals CD patterns. If a bearish reversal candle were to form on a weekly or a monthly, then we would have trouble in River City. But otherwise, uh, PDFS looks uh, pretty darn good. I don't think you need a whole lot of help out there. And uh, thanks so much for writing in and best regards to you. Next question from uh, Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Dan wants to take a look at ticker symbol AQST. We're going to switch our screens. Uh, oh, we are back on the white screen. Did I not have the black one up? Black charts. Jeez, even though I put up, we're going to go back and do this here. I'll do it quickly. Sorry about that. Don't know what I did, but I did it. So here's the here's the different A to B equals CD patterns. You see on the daily time frame, you can see on the weekly time frame, we got one drawn in, but really it's the monthly that I want you to just focus in on right now, which gives us that price projection of 46.95 out here. You're above profile, we're above profile on the weekly. You know, we've got a new profile that's formed here. Actually, we're above profile on the uh, daily too. So the daily, the top of its profile is 48. And yeah, this is a very strong equity out there. But again, it looks like a timeout, maybe a pullback, maybe just a sideways move out there. So I do hope that helps you out, uh, whoever it was that put in that request. It might have been, might have been Dwayne, but I'm not sure. Let's go take a look at PDF, uh, AQST, I'm sorry, AQST. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. AQST, what a nice move out here today. It is, uh, however, it is forming bar number eight of a TD9 cone. Let's open this up. So this should form some type of short-term top between today and Friday. I expect or anticipate that this will go out and uh, try to tag that 101 level. We're at 94, so are we going to see a top today? Well, the only way I'd say we'd see a top today is if we see a top, let's say, on a short-term intraday time frame chart, such as this one here, and this one is the 30-minute time frame. Well, you're in bar number eight on a 30-minute time frame. So, Dan, between 11.30 and 12 noon, you should see a 30-minute short-term top on AQST. Now, we may not get that. The reason to point this out is because whatever that high is, the present high at the moment appears to be 94 cents. I don't know if that's going to be 94, but if we do see a close above 90, we're on the black charts. Oh, my goodness gracious. Stevie, wake the heck up. What the heck's happening here? Hmm. Some brain contusions going on. So now we are. Hey, thank, thankfully, though, we've got a wingman in our Tiger's Den. That is Mr. Bill, and he keeps me He keeps me on. He keeps me honest out there. So now we've got the uh, white background charts. Here's the 30-minute chart. You can see the TD9 count top that will complete uh, by um, – uh, by uh, 30 minutes, by 12 noon out there. Now, if price trades above that high, that tells you you're headed up to that daily TD9 count breakdown resistance level. We'll show that to you again out here. That's in the uh, dollar uh, one area, dollar one with regard to AQST. Again, there's the TD9 count pattern that should form between today and uh, Friday. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, this says uh, you got a nice TD9 count bottom. I want to make a move to 98 or 101, clear 101. Then you headed up to 135. And maybe even 172. So AQST, Dan, looks uh, muy bueno out there. And uh, thank you so much for the uh, request. Much appreciated. And uh, Denners, I'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, feel free to go ahead and type in a request out there. And I will be happy to uh, get to it. Let me just check the email responses here real quickly. Yeah, we've got one from Jane. Jane, thank you. Jane, let's take a look at CRBP. Let me just move back to uh, this first panel. 
And let's type in uh, CRBP. Let's get that fired up here. And CRBP is Corbis Pharmaceuticals. So uh, while that's loading on the white background charts, what the heck is going on there? Let me try to read the question. It says, hey, Steve, could you please take a look at uh, CRBP? Actually, you've got something else written down here. Let me try to expand this out. you got CRBP. Yes, okay, CRBP. I just got in it, but uh, I'm looking at bare term and what it might do, maybe longer term. Anyways, uh, oh, i got to type in the actual correct symbol. So what we do know here, folks, and this is courtesy of uh, Stevie's typing skills out there, or lack thereof, there is no CVBP. In case you want to go public, that symbol is available. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we've got the charts up here for CRBP. That is Corpus Pharmaceuticals. That's for Jane, who uh, just got in it. So, Jane, let me tell you where resistance is at. So it's trading right now at 783. You have resistance at these two different price levels, 846, which happens to be the top of the monthly profile, and then 858, that happens to be the weekly TD9 count breakdown level. Those are two price points that you want to see price be able to close above. That would then suggest a further rally. The further rally that it would suggest is up to 1874. Now, this thing has made more than a double over about the last two weeks out there. You can see it was trading down 
on the $2 area. This is on the trading session of March the 13th. So how many trading sessions is that? Maybe about 10 or so. And that was down at about $2.13. And you're at 783. Be on the lookout or be careful. Watch for a bearish reversal candle. Should one form, at least at this moment in time, that would then confirm a road's momentum indicator top for the daily time frame and suggest a further move lower. I don't expect that you will see that today. The reason that I would say that, it's not a guarantee, but if I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, which we are, this negated a TD9 count uh, topping pattern immediately. So it does have strong momentum on the short-term time frame. Uh, it's trading above profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. And it gave that TD9 count top. So it does look like a strong move today. Uh, this is going to be day number two to the upside consecutive, or appears that it'll be day number two to uh, consecutive moves to the upside with regard to its stance steps out here. Um, this should form some type of short-term top, you know, today. Tomorrow, those would be the la would be the likely outcome. It's not that it has to, but that would be the most likely outcome. Usually has uh, three uh, consecutive days before we see some kind of a, a pullback or retracement out there. So overall, looks pretty good. You're uh, you're up towards a resistance level. Just watch those areas. Uh, again, that was at the uh, what did I say? It was at the six eight forty six and eight. Uh, 58. And again, on the daily time frame, just watch for some type of bearish reversal candle. If you get one there, that's going to tell you about a retracement that's going to unfold or a pullback or even a top. Let's go to the next request out here. This is for BP from Mitch 75. Uh, Mitch is in at about, uh, he says, uh, about 38 bucks or so. As I wrote down, is that right? Uh, in at 38, is trading out at 37.72. So what do we have out here? Well, we might have an A to B equals CD to the upside that is attempting to form the B point. Did volume, that was uh, March the 22nd, of 8.4 million shares. Looks like yesterday didn't, cl didn't close above it, was 8.4 million shares. So you had similar volume moving into it. And today so far in two hours of trading, we're 2.4. So 2.45, but some about the same type of volume. So you could be getting an A to B equals CD to the upside out here, Mitch. We'll do the price projections on my other screens. Mr. Bill will keep me honest, make sure that I actually change over to that. In the meantime, what price should do, it's trade above the top of its profile. It's got a nice TD9 count bottom. Again, it looks like it's turning into an A to B equals CD to the upside. One price projection level would be its TD9 count breakdown area, and that's at 4018. So that becomes a price target. The weekly says my price target of resistance is 38.28. That number is going to change by pennies as price moves up or down. The monthly chart says, hey, 40.08 is your key level that price needs to overcome in order to be on its merry way. That's the TD9 count breakdown resistance area. That's what it hit last month. We do have a wave number seven. That is a topping signal that is out there. But price above profile, it's green oscillator and change line. That neutralizes the monthly signal. But we do want to continue to at least pay attention to it. Uh, looks like you had a sell the D point pattern on the weekly chart that formed with that bearish shooting star price pulled back to support, which in this instance here was the bottom of its profile, 34.99. So let's switch over and take a look at the black background charts. We'll do that here first, and then we'll put the uh, symbol up, and we'll take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern on the daily time frame that may be forming for BP, or is likely forming for BP. Now, of course, you'd like to see the volume in this today as it's past that B point, so I don't know what the ending volume is going to look like. But here's what the... Uh, that was a short one that I was looking at. So let me just give you the short A to, yeah, let me just give you the A to B equals CD pattern that we're looking at right now. That's going to use the low out here from the trading day of March 16th. The high is going to be the high of March 22nd, and the low is going to be a two-day pullback into March 24th. The one-to-one -one price projection level. Now, that is an assumption. Well, as assumption, it closed about 37.45 today, and again, the preference would be more than 8.7 million shares. Even if you don't get the volume, it still could make the uh, price target of 38.48. Now, that's the one-to-one. -one. This could do more than a one-to-one. -one. A to B equals city. Just depends how it trades. And that's at 39.38. I uh, remember at 40.18 is where you have the daily TD9 count breakdown resistance. So, Mitch, let me make sure. Did this go? Is this showing? Is It's showing now. Jeez, Louise, Stevie. Wow. That is so weird. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm on black. I know you were betting on red out there. Uh, so there's the A to B equals CD pattern that you can see here for BP. And again, 38.48 being the uh, first price target, 39.38 being another price target, 40.18 being the uh, TD9 count breakdown area out there. So I hope that helps you out, Mitch, and uh, best of luck to you in that uh, trade. The next request uh, coming from inside the Tigers, Dan, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, from Muck. 
wants to muck it up, wants to take a look at Amazon, A-M-Z-N. So let's pull that up. Steve, please check out Amazon. Okay, we will just do that. We'll check it out. And of course, folks, I would love to hear from you as well. So 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. I'll be happy to get to that request. In fact, during the break, I think there was an email came in yesterday that was, uh, I didn't get to it till late. And so I'll try to find out uh, what that request was. I see one here from Hector. With regard to Amazon, what do we know about Amazon? Amazon is trading above the top of its uh, profile, daily profile. Its green oscillator and change line conditions are bullish. What Amazon should do is go target its recent high. Its recent high is from March 22nd, and that's up at 102.10. Now, the volume in that candle session was 57 million. So far, the volume today in the first two hours of trading, about 20 million. So this is pushing into that swing point with volume. Amazon should go at least target that. Now, if it takes that out, that would set up a very large A to B equals CD to the upside pattern out there. Uh, if I look at... Um Amazon on the weekly basis, you're trading above. This would be week number three above the top of its profile. That's a bullish message and says it wants to move higher. On a monthly time frame, price found support at its breakout area at 81.30. You're just consolidating with inside its profiles. Odds uh, favor that price will target the 116.22 level. So Amazon looking pretty good as we speak. It should at least go target that swing point high uh, from March 22nd. And if it can close above that high, then you'd get an A to B equals C to the upside. Where would that A to B We'll see the upside take is Stevie. Let's draw the A to B line. Then we can just move that over to the C area out here, and that'll give us an approximation. So here's the uh, C area, about right there, give or take. And that would give you a price projection in the 109, 110 ish area. You're not there yet, but that's what it could potentially turn into. If I take a look at consecutive days down, consecutive days up, uh, you had just had a three-day retracement out there, kind of common, the two, three, four-day retracements out there. So we should see at least a two to three, maybe even a four-day move to the upside inside Amazon. So Amazon should trade higher for the rest of the week. So I hope that helps you out. That was for Muck inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, Hector wants to take a look at Caterpillar out here. So C-A-T is the ticker symbol. Let's actually open up the email, read the question, it goes like this. Happy, wonderful, wet Wednesday. Ah, that's Hector's in California. Cat, we loaded up the wagon on a buy the D point this past Monday, looking to close the uh, gap up above. What are your thoughts? Well, if we take a look at Caterpillar out here, which has a nice TD9 count uh, bottom, what price should do is, uh, so it's trading into its swing point. This is from the trading session, March 22nd, 2.9 million shares. So far today, you are up into that with about 475, so that's five times three. You're moving into that swing point with light volume. Nonetheless, it still may go target that high, 226.59. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, sea of green out there still. You've got all the uh, U.S. indices trading to the upside, all the sector. Well, the XLB just went down by a penny. Otherwise, all the other sectors are green. We're taking like a caterpillar. This is for Hector and Patty out in California. Hector's specific question was, will the daily chart get up to this gap that was formed out here in the uh, trading day of March the 10th? Hector and Patty, if it's going to do that, price going to have to take out resistance, and that is the TD, that is the uh, uh, TAS market profile resistance located two thirty seventy eight. So the answer to that question will be revealed to you should Caterpillar make its way up in that two thirty seventy eight level out there. Um, is there anything else that I see on this chart to assist us? There is. Well, let me take a look at a thirty minute time frame, and on a thirty minute basis out here, uh, thank you, Al. And a thirty minute cat's not showing. Wow, wow, what the heck is going on here? Jeez Louise, Stevie. Hmm. Sorry about that, folks. Obviously, I'm having an off day out here. I keep thinking I'm doing something, and uh, it's the opposite. So here's Caterpillar. Let's just come back out here. Let's take a look at Caterpillar. You can see on the daily time frame, the TD9 count pattern. Price pulled back uh, last week in the profile support at 215.30 out there. Did that as uh, that's what uh, got Hector and Patty into this trade out there. Now we're inside a bullish structured profile. Yesterday was a close above that, but not above its oscillator and change line. Today we're above both out there. This says that Caterpillar should make a run for 230.78. That's that level that price would have to bust above in order to get back to this gap area out here that formed on the trading session of March the 10th. Now, the volume, though, before price can get up there, it's dealing with this little swing point here from uh, uh, March the 22nd. Again, 2.9 million shares traded hands there. Today, you're up into it with much lighter volume. You're only at 484 right now. So it looks like about a $1.5 million day, give or take, out there. Uh, but nonetheless, it still should continue to move higher. If we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, that's where we were headed. Just see if there are any impediments here. The impediment here is going to be 224.37. So if you get it close about 224.37, 4437 that would be another bullish signal uh, for you Hector and uh, Patty so I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Caterpillar and um, and uh, thanks so much for the request out there we've got a request this came in yesterday uh, from HD and HD wanted to take like a two symbols uh, AU is the uh, first one so that's what we've got up on our screen out here so uh, Anglo Shante is uh, it uh, formed a TD9 count top out here it did that on the trading day of March the 24th and that pattern was negated two days later this is telling us about a strong upward momentum move well upward momentum move to where Stevie well if we take a look at where it's trading into it's a weekly swing point from January the 13th volume there was 13.87 million shares so far for the week you have done 8.4 million shares on a daily basis this does about what about four uh, yesterday three the other day so eight three eleven 
and we're going into 13. So it looks like, uh, you know, you're going to have a little bit of resistance out here. And that's going to be at the high. That high, which it should go target, is up at the 23.37. So nice looking chart on the daily time frame. Um, nice looking chart on the weekly with the exception of the fact that price is moving into a swing point on letter volume. Everything looks pretty good here on the monthly chart. Its resistance level is really what we've already covered. It's up at the price point of uh, 23.37 out there. So Anglo Shante looks uh, muy bueno HD. Let's go take a look at Rigatoni out here. See what uh, Rig is doing. Transocean Rig trading out right now at about 674. So what do we see here? We like what we see on the daily time frame from the standpoint prices above resistance, both the top of its profile and, oh, yeah, and its oscillator and change line. So that is good. 626, yeah. So that's a positive. It suggests a run up to 748. The weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count top. Price pulled back and tested support. This was a bullish structured profile and it found support at the center at 557. The monthly chart says... That uh, when's the month end? Is it on Friday? Is it Thursday? Where is it? Uh, get your calendar out, Stevie, and see where does the month end out here? Is that? Uh, yeah, it's Friday, right? Yeah, on Friday. So on Friday, if price closes below, this is rig that we're taking a look at. If price closes below 694, you will generate a sell the D point pattern for the monthly time frame out there. And that suggests we could see a uh, pullback out here. But with regard to the daily, it looks pretty good. We move to the upside, 748 being a price target. The weekly is saying looks pretty good, wants to go target 769. And the monthly is saying, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I just might be. So I hope that helped you out. Uh, and thanks so much for your patience in waiting two days. That was for HD. We had a request to take a look at natural gas. So let's go switch over to those charts here. And we'll just stay with these white background screens. I'll put up... Uh, this set of charts for natural gas. So in this this case here, we're going to get a little bit bigger overview as to what's going on. And uh, if we take a look at uh, the monthly time frame, you'll see a nice hammer candle. No bottom pattern, but we do see a hammer candle. So if on Friday, price closes below two dollars and twenty five cents out there, it you know the the saying is or the expression is, if you're long, you're wrong should you have a close below the bottom of a hammer candle. In the case of the weekly time frame, this formed a TD9 count bottom. It did it the week of February 24th. That support level was down at, looks like it got moved, 2.263 out there. If we get a close below that, that pattern gets negated. Now there's a road momentum indicator signal that's triggered, but that would require a bullish reversal candle to get us into a long position from a weekly standpoint. On the daily chart out here, we have a, a road momentum indicator bottom pattern that was negated. That was negated two days ago. We're trading below that low. That means what we're looking for here is another bullish reversal candle in order for uh, to generate another bottom pattern out there. And you also want to see it close above that red oscillator and change line at 222. Now let's look at the intraday charts out here. The 30-minute chart had a nice road momentum indicator bottom. I'm not sure why price stopped where it did. Maybe we'll find out and take a look at the larger term time frame charts. Road momentum indicator bottom signal here on the 60-minute. And yes, price found resistance at the top of its profile, $2.16. So $2, and to give you exact, 2.167 is a key area of resistance out there. If price can close above that, that would tell you about a further rally. Otherwise, you've just seen this little counter trend move up to it. Rose momentum indicator signal on the 120 minute chart. This pattern here, this candle completes at noon. But let me make sure. Don't want to, uh, yeah, at noon. So it looks to me like we'll have a confirmed Rose momentum indicator bottom for the 120 minute chart, but 217, we're back to that 217 level, is resistance. That's the bottom of its profile. And at 220 is the bottom of the weekly, I'm sorry, of the 240 minute profile. So it's that 217 area with regard to natural gas. They'd like to see price close above. Maybe then you could get some type of a daily bullish reversal candle. But as we speak right now, that is not the pattern. We don't have any, um, and, and the weekly chart, again, it's only Wednesday, so things could change. But right now on the monthly, things are looking pretty disgusting, as is the weekly chart. But again, a price close above 226 on Friday. Well, that original TD9 count bottom 
would remain in effect out there. So I hope that helps you out. That was with regard to uh, natural gas. Let me just check the email system here real quickly, see if there's any other requests. Hector was the last one. And the answer is, uh, yeah, we've got one here from Nicholas. Nicholas writes in, he says, good morning, Steve, late to the show. If you have one, you please go over Microsoft. Absolutely. So let's get back to the Microsoft charts and we'll do that. We'll take a look at Microsoft when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. You've got the U.S. indices trading to the upside, all the sectors as well with inside the S&P 500. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So for Nicholas, we're going to take a look at the Microsoft out here. Trading out at 279.62. Nicholas says he uh, wants to take a look at this to uh, possibly go short. So, Nicholas, right now you're trading with inside a brand new daily profile. That formed yesterday. Your support level is 270.90. Your resistance is at 281.95. Now, in a daily time frame, there's a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. The swing point out here was the uh, trading day of February 8th. The volume on that session was 54 million shares. When that was passed, and that was passed and closed above on March 17th, that was 69 million shares. So there's, I don't have it drawn in here, but I can tell you that the confirmed A to B equals CD. The upside gives you a price projection of 303.20, and that is on Microsoft. If price closed above 281.95, that's going to be the message to you. So you do have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. On a weekly time frame, and again, that's 303.20. 
293.30 is the weekly TD9 count breakdown area. So I would say if you're going to short it, it's probably between that 293 to 303-ish area that you'd be looking at. However, the price gets up there. There's no reason that you can't get up to 315.95, and that is the monthly TD9 count breakdown level with regard to Microsoft. So with regard to Microsoft and shorting it, I would keep your hands in your pockets right now. You have a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. You're above profiles on the weekly chart. Uh, the only thing that's really stalling it right now is we talked about yesterday is on the monthly time frame, that green oscillator and change line. But that's just a stalling point. I don't think that is a shorting point. So I do hope that helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for the uh, request out there. So to summarize the things, folks, what we have out here in the markets, we have market breadth that is bullish for all four time frames for the NASDAQ 100. Three of the four time frames with regard to the S&P 500, the one that is not, is the weekly chart out there. The advanced client oscillator. It is in a bullish position. Spot volatility is below its 50-day exponential moving average. That is a bullish position. Folks, the rally should not only hold, it should continue. But pay attention to those numbers that I gave you inside the ES Mini out there. We did that earlier in the show, and I don't have them memorized out here. So have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll see you on Terrific Thursday. Oh, it was 40-43-25 for the ES Mini. We're at 40-43-75. Take care, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.